Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan and I'm joined by Dan Bell, who's Director of Sales at HiFX for our Never a Dull Moment Currency Report. Welcome again, Dan. Thank you, mate. Look, uh, big news over the weekend, Friday night New Zealand time, the US non-farm payrolls, the jobs report there, very closely watched every month and very strong. Very, very strong indeed. So the US economy um, generated 295,000 new jobs in the month of, of February, which was more than expected and continues um, to show ongoing strength in the US economy. So if you look at the last six months, the, the jobs growth that the US has generated uh, is the highest since the mid-1990s. So you have to go back to the good old Bill Clinton days um, to see a period of such strong employment growth in the US economy. So onwards and upwards for uh, for the US economy on that front. And obviously that has seen the US dollar strengthen a lot over the weekend and um, and, 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 and sort of reconfirmed the uh, expectations of a, of a, of a, of a long-awaited Federal Reserve um, interest rate hike this year. Indeed, yeah, very much so. So the US dollar strengthened significantly on, on Friday night, so that um, uh, employment uh, report was out around midnight New Zealand time. The New Zealand dollar had been trading around 75.50 against the US dollar through most of Friday afternoon, uh, and we shed uh, almost 2% um, against the US dollar in response to that economic news. So um, we're sitting around sort of the mid 73s at the moment uh, and looking very, very vulnerable to further weakness. So um, I think what the US jobs number is, is really telling us is that the Fed will be hiking interest rates this year. Um, most analysts um, think that it's going to start in June. So we're going to see the Fed starting to, to raise interest rates uh, in June this year and that's going to continue to provide support to the US dollar. So the Kiwi dollar might be heading down towards 70? Look, I think so. I mean, um, you know, and, and I think everyone needs to realise that, um, you know, what we're seeing in the US economy, um, you know, and, we, and we've been quite used to um, sluggish, um, you know, growth in the US economy since the, the global financial crisis. We've been quite used to higher commodity prices. Um, and you know that that dynamic isn't isn't playing out this year. So I don't think that New Zealand dollar has got any 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 chance of making it back towards 80 cents against the US dollar over the next 12 months. And I think there's um, probably a big adjustment that needs to happen in the minds of uh, of businesses and individuals that are hoping for the currency to recover to those sorts of levels. So I think we're sort of reverting back to a longer term a longer term um, level against the US dollar, and that's probably around 70, potentially even lower than that. And obviously this week too, Thursday, um, OCR review, official cash rate review from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, monetary policy statement as well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously no one will be expecting Graham Wheeler to actually change the OCR, but we'll be very interested in what he says about the New Zealand dollar, about the Auckland housing market, I guess will be the, the two key issues. Yeah. What are you going to be looking for and what are you going to be expecting? Yeah, the, the, look, I think this Thursday is going to be an interesting one. Um, look, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is uh, is between a rock and a hard place, um, you know, in terms of, of the cash rate and our monetary policy. Uh, every other major central bank apart from the US uh, around the world has been, you know, loosening uh, loosening interest rates or cutting interest rates. And just look at our uh, our cousins across the ditch, Australia, where um, the Reserve Bank of Australia cut interest rates uh, in February. They left them on hold last week at 2.25%, but the RBA are expected to probably cut again, um, and maybe even as, as early as next month or, or May. So that'll take their cash rate down to 2%. Our cash rate at 3.5% isn't doing us any favours in terms of um, our productive sector and, and uh, our export competitiveness to places like Australia. Um, our currency made a, a post float high of uh, just over 97.20 against the Australian dollar over the last fortnight. Uh, and we've been trading at uh, post float highs against the euro as well, over 68 and a half. So uh, if you're looking at going for a holiday to Europe or Australia, um, we've pretty much never been better. So um, that is going to be a real challenge for the Reserve Bank next week. Um, and putting the housing market to one side, um, obviously he came out with some with a, um, some macro prudential ideas again last week in terms of um, potentially raising the um, the capital required for um, for investor loans for the banks. So we'll see how that plays out as well. And um, you mentioned obviously Australia and the Aussie, Aussie dollar. We've had a lot of talk about parity lately, but uh, Kiwi back to about 95 Aussie cents today. Is, is, yeah. is parity talk off the table again for a little while? Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, it had that burst higher last week and over 97, suddenly it, it looked like it was going to 
push push even higher than that. Um, we've sort of come back down after uh, after the Fed's. Um, you know, we've we've fallen quicker than the Australian dollar after the um, after the employment report out of the US on Friday. Um, I guess also there there tend to be some pretty big um, flows between the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar at times, uh, and we do hear through the grapevine that, um, for example, the, the the New Zealand banks are repatriating profits back to their Australian parent companies, and you're talking about you know billions of dollars of of potential balance sheet hedging that can occur as well um, between New Zealand and Australia. So I think when the New Zealand dollar pops up to these all-time highs, we do see quite some big corporate flows. And I think that's had an impact there because ultimately we are still talking about the New Zealand economy outperforming the Australian economy moving forward. Uh, our Reserve Bank has still got a, I mean, they're, they're, they don't have a hawkish posture, they've got a, a probably a neutral posture at the moment, whereas the Reserve Bank of Australia is clearly still talking the Australian dollar down and still talking about cutting interest rates. So I don't see the New Zealand Aussie cross rate um, you know, falling away too quickly. Uh, it's probably going to remain within that sort of 94 to sort of 97 and a half, 98 cent range for the time being. And you think that uh, Wheeler on Thursday will keep that neutral stance? Look, I, I, I kind of think he's going to come out a little bit more dovish personally. Um, just because, you know, look, I, I think we've got, um, we've certainly got issues in, in, in the housing market. But if you look at, at the way Australia is playing out, you know, you can't, you can't separate um, New Zealand too much from from what's happening in Australia and and China for that matter. So, um, yeah, I think he needs to be uh, certainly very very uh, sensitive and aware of of the ongoing weakness in the Australian economy, the ongoing um, I guess weakness in 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 China. And not that China's fallen off a cliff, but certainly their uh, their appetite to to import um, commodities um, has 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 weakened significantly over the last um, over the last year or so. So. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's a tricky job, that's for sure, for the RBNZ at the moment. Yeah, on, on China we saw a, a 61 billion US dollar trade surplus for, for February there, so mm. uh, interesting story there in terms of rising exports and, 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 and falling imports. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously what goes on in China is very important. How closely are people in the currencies world watching China at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone is aware that China has, um, you know, Ch China has slowed from, you know, from the kind of economic growth that we've seen over the last sort of five to ten years, and the underlying mix uh, within their economy has changed. So that the huge investment that they had going into to infrastructure and, uh, and and housing has come off, and obviously that means uh, weaker demand for um, you know, a lot of the stuff that Australia digs out of the ground, uh, and potentially also for um, for logs uh, out of New Zealand. So. Um, what we're seeing, I guess, in, in China at the moment is that China is benefiting from a stronger US economy uh, and that a global uh, recovery in consumer spending um, will benefit China because they are still you know, the world's largest manufacturer. So um, I guess that, you know, that, that, that element of the Chinese economy is, um, is rebalancing their underlying um, you know, growth outlook away from this you know, huge investment in infrastructure back towards a more export-led um, economic story. And, and over to Europe, um, we're, we're hearing about Greece a lot uh, again. It, it, it sort of seems to be a bit of a never-ending story, um, <laughs> yeah. toing and froing between the Greeks and various other EU countries and officials, etc. Cans being kicked down the road. Um, I mean, how concerned are markets about the situation with Greece these days? Yeah, not, not not as much as we used to be. You know, if you go back a, a few years and when the European debt crisis really flared up. Um, you know, everyone was concerned that uh, you know, about Greece, and and if they left the eurozone, it would have this sort of black swan kind of Lehman Brothers type event, and we would see, uh, you know, we'd see a huge contagion effect. It seems as if we're more comfortable now that you know Greece and and the eurozone is just this drawn out um, <laughs> tragedy of sorts, and that they keep kicking the can down the road. Uh, obviously the. Um, with, with the euro, um, uh, the euro group have given Greece a, a four-month extension on their uh, on their de 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 debt deal. Um, so you know, giving the uh, the new powers that be, the new um, political um, party that's taking control in Greece, a bit of time to get their house in order. Um, and obviously, the ECB kick off um, this week on their um, their bond buying program. So the 1.1 trillion odd euros of of stimulus that they're going to be pumping into the system. So. 
I guess uh, everyone's hoping that that is going to provide the necessary stimulus for um, economies like Greece, France, Italy, Spain, you name it, to um, you know, see, some, uh, see some decent growth. Well, thanks a lot for that, Dan. That's Dan Bell, who's Director of Sales at IFX, with our Never a Dull Moment Currency Report. And I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.